Okay, now an AP Physics 2 review for electrostatics. We'll start putting some numbers on things. You now, for instance, if I've got two charges here, what do I do with them? Or if I just have one charge here. Now, let's start with one charge. And let's say this one is a positive 6 uh, microcoulomb charge. So we know that all of the charge is going to reside on the outside, so all of our positives are going to be located here. But for the purpose of calculations, it's going to look like they all come from the center. So let's say I've, I want to measure out someplace here what's going on. I will measure from the center of this charge okay, out to that location there. But assuming this is a metal sphere or it could be hollow or solid, the charge is going to reside on the outside. Okay, now would I figure this out? Well, how much charge is actually there? Well, six microcoulombs. Well, remember, one coulomb does equal 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons. So if I want to find out how many electrons have been removed from this sphere to make this charge, I would just multiply these two numbers, 6 times 10 to the minus 6, because remember micro is 10 to the minus 6, and I would multiply it by my Coulomb number here, 6.25 times 10 to the 18th. I liken this to like the mole concept in chemistry. Now if this was a negative charge, when I get that answer, that will be how many extra electrons have been added to the sphere. Okay, so how do we handle this in calculations? So if I've got two charges, and I want to know what the force is between them. So let's say this one here is a, you know, a positive Q, and this one's a, a negative 2Q. So now I know that these, this will be attractive forces here. So there'll be a force electric pulling this way and one going this way. Remember, of equal magnitudes, remember Newton's third law, equal and opposite. We will actually measure center to center and call that our radius r. So our driving equation is Coulomb's law, force electric, equals k, q1, times the absolute value of q2, all divided by r squared. Now we do use absolute values because uh, we want to manually assign our directions. For instance, the force electric on this one will be in a positive direction as it's attracted this way and it'll be a negative direction for this. Okay, now remember the K constant K is 9.0 times 10 to the 9th, and that's Newton meters squared over Coulomb squared. So it's an easy equation to use. But what if I uh, double the charge here? Well, force electric is directly proportional to the charges, so our force electric will just double. But what if I double the radius? Well, since radius squared is on the bottom, that our force electric will go down, okay, by four. Now, what about dealing with electric field? So we have a charge here. Let's just call it Q. Okay, and let's say this is the hollow sphere. The driving equation for electric field on point charges, E equals KQ divided by R squared. Our electric field is equal to force electric per charge. If only one Q shows up in our equation because we would divide the other Q out. And speaking of which, what kind of Q do we use? Well, we use a very small positive test charge. So let's say I place that positive test charge inside a hollow sphere. Well, inside, electric field equals zero. What if I place it right inside the metal itself? electric field there is still equal to zero. What if I place it out here somewhere? I now will measure from my center out to that and give that the letter R. Our equation is E equals K and the Q will be the value of our hollow sphere, okay, divided by R squared. So it'll be the electric field. Now what if I wanted to know the electric potential at that? Well, that means volts. Volts is a joule okay, per coulomb, okay, voltage as the equation kq, okay, divided by r. We actually get that by integrating this expression and 1 over r squared, and then, then we go backwards when you take the integral and you're left with only an r there. Okay, but what if I want to know what's my potential energy at that location? Well, we have a volt equal joule per coulomb, so if I take uh, volts and multiply it by the value of the Q at that location, okay, that is going to equal the electric potential energy at that point. 
Okay, so how do we handle all this? Well, let's say I've got two different places, okay, that I want to measure, okay, voltage and things like that. So let's say I have another location here, okay, and that's at the same distance R, okay. Okay, the way we calculate this then is we're going to say volts 2 minus volts 1 is equal to delta V. Well, in this case, they're both at the same radius. So if I go here onto that location, my change in volts is actually equal to 0. Therefore, my change in electric potential energy is also equal to 0. Now, I could go up this way, back down this way, all over the place, and if I end up at the same place, my change in volts is equal to zero. It doesn't matter the path that I actually go at. It really makes no difference at all. Just my starting point and my ending point, okay, whatever my change in volts is, there you go. Therefore, my change in potential energy has to equal zero. Now, what if my second distance is right here, and let's map that distance out there. Let's call that R prime. Well, then I would use V equals KQ over R for this location and V equals KQ over R prime for that calculation there. And then V2 minus V1 is actually going to give us some kind of a positive value there. So I'll just say equals a positive. Okay, so that'll equal our delta V. Why is that positive? Well, I'm going closer into the sphere. Now, remember, I could start here, go all the way out there, go inside, come back out. As long as I end there, that's my final uh, volts position there. Okay, so that's my change in volts. It's going to be a positive because I'm going closer to a positive sphere. Okay, now if I was negative, that would be an opposite story. So how would I calculate my change in electric potential energy? Well, then I'll use this equation. I'll say delta V multiplied by whatever Q I have there, whatever its value is. It's going to be small in comparison. So we'll have an actual value for the charge there. If it's a proton charge, then the charge will be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. So I take my change of volts multiplied by Q, and that's going to equal electric potential energy. Now, that really should be labeled as a change, and I'll put delta there. Now, this is also equal to the work done. It's the work done as I go from this spot to there. If I go from here to there, work done is zero. If I go from here to there, work done is going to be positive. What if I start here and go farther away? Then my work done is going to be negative because I'm going from higher potential to lower potential. And that's how that works. Now, if this was a negative charge and this still is a positive, then the work done coming closer is actually going to be negative. The work done going away is going to be positive because it's attracted inwards. It doesn't take any force from me to make it go that direction. It's going to naturally happen. And if I go farther away, then I got to put work into that. Okay, now remember what when we say you know the work done or change in electric potential energy. Remember that could go into uh, more potential energy or it could convert into kinetic energy. So in other words, if I'm moving Q closer and it's positive, that's going into greater potential energy. But if I let that charge go, it's going to buzz away, and we're going to see a loss in potential energy, and that goes to kinetic. So if work is negative, that means we have electric potential energy being converted into kinetic. If work is positive, that means we're just producing more electric potential energy because we're adding force to that, making the charge go closer to the sphere. Now, again, that's if it's positive. Okay, so that's how all that is done.